Now, at the end of January, a court in Germany ruled that because a particular user had accessed a website that had a Google font on it, and that IP address for that specific user had been sent over to Google, which is identifying information, that's against GDPR. Now, depending upon where you are in the world, you may think that GDPR doesn't affect you. But the reality is, if you have a website that's accessible to European Union-based visitors, you do have to look into GDPR. Now, I'll put a link to this particular court ruling and the article about it in the description below. But basically, what it means is that if you have visitors in Germany, you could be fined up to 100 euros for that IP information being sent to Google. So that obviously is a problem. Now, you may be thinking, well, I don't have visitors in Germany, but I think because this is GDPR related, at some point, rulings like this are going to spread a little bit further afield and you may well be affected. So what does that mean for us? Well, we have to protect ourselves. We can use GDPR information to inform users and allow them to choose whether they want to have this information sent over, but easier is to store those Google fonts locally. Therefore, no IP address information is being sent from your server to Google. So today in this video, after this longer than expected intro, I'm gonna show you several ways in which you can actually handle this. Now, depending upon the, what tools you use, hopefully there's gonna be a solution inside you for you. Okay, so first of all, let's take a quick look that if we are using something like Bloxy, for example, your theme, with the pro version of that, we can easily install Google fonts into our local server as opposed to using Google servers. So let me quickly show you how to do that. Now this is obviously specific to Bloxy, but I would recommend whatever theme you're using to check out the theme to see if there's an option in there. Okay, so let's just take a quick look at a site that's got Bloxy installed on it. So what we need to do is go into the Bloxy options and inside there we've got extensions. Under extensions there's Pro extensions. Now this is a pro feature, so you're not gonna have this with the free version. And then there we've got a couple of different options. If you want to use external fonts like Adobe fonts, you can just activate the Adobe fonts option. But what I'm looking at is the local Google fonts option. So once that's activated, you can then go ahead and just add Google fonts. And all this allows you to do then is search for Google fonts and simply go ahead and add them. And then you can synchronize that and you have access to that font throughout your entire site, but it's hosted locally on your own server, therefore removing that IP problem. So that's one method. So next on the agenda is if you're using a page builder like Elementor, can you deal with it in a similar fashion? Well, yes, you can. So let's take a look at that next. So what we're gonna to need to do first of all is get the font or fonts that we want to download and get those from, well, you can use Google fonts if you want to, but you can use anywhere else you can get fonts from. So if we hop over onto Google's fonts, search for the font or fonts that you want, and you'll find once you open up that font, you'll have an option that says download family. Select that option, download the file or files to your computer and unzip the zip file and that'll have a folder full of relevant information. So once you've downloaded, unzipped it, you're going to get a folder like this. And as you can see inside here, we've got various different things like licenses and so on. Now you can see we've got two different files. Now these are the complete sets of the entire Open Sans sort of group. We don't want those. We want to open up this static folder inside here. We're gonna have the Open Sans, Open Sans Condensed, and the Semi Condensed, three different variations of the same font family. We're only interested in the Open Sans one though for this example, and inside there are each of the individual fonts. Now you can see these are TTF or true type fonts. That may limit how broad the support for these are. So you may want to sort of convert these over to something like the WOFF or WOFF2 formats, which are basically the web open font format. This is gonna open up more support across different browsers and you can do that very easily. If we hop back over, and I'll put a link to this in the description below. There's a link to a free resource online called Cloud Convert. And inside here, you can choose to convert your font files across various different formats. So you can see we've got EOT, OTF, TTF, WOFF, those kinds of things. So you can convert it to whatever font format you want out of those. So once you've gone ahead and converted your fonts, the next thing you need to do is upload the file or files over into Elementor. To do that, we're gonna go over into the dashboard and into the Elementor settings section. So inside there, you're gonna see we've got custom fonts. Now don't worry that I'm using the developer's edition. You'll still have the same options. So let's open up the custom fonts option. And inside there, we can now go ahead and create a new custom font group. 
So for this example, let's add a new one. We're going to call this Open Sans. We'll put local underneath just so we know what it is. And now what we can do is we can add a font variation. So we'll click add font variation. And this then allows us to choose one of five different file formats. So if you've converted it, just choose the relevant format for you. And as you can see, it will tell you the sort of benefits of each of these different kinds of formats in this little sort of box to the right hand side of it. So what we're going to do is you can see we can choose the weight and the style. This is more for classification than anything. So what we're going to do is normal and normal is perfectly fine. And we're going to use the TTF font for this example. We'll hit upload. I've already gone ahead and uploaded a couple of variations, but we'll ignore those for now and we'll just go ahead and upload the new file. So we'll select the file and there's all of our different individual fonts. So for this example, we're just going to choose the regular, Open Sans regular. We'll click open, that will upload that and we'll select that TTF file. So now we've uploaded that, it's the normal, normal version. If we want to add another variation, we can add another variation. So let's go and add the bold version. So this time I'm going to say weight is going to be bold, style is normal, so it's not italic or anything. We'll click upload on there again and we'll do exactly the same thing. We'll upload a file, we'll look for that bold version and we'll click on open. The beauty of doing it this way is that you only need to install the fonts and the weights of the fonts that you actually want to use in your design no loading extra things in. So this is going to streamline and ultimately will reduce the sort of server load and other resources. So it should help in a very small percentage to improve the speed of your website. Okay, so once you've done that, we can publish this. And then we've got two variations of our Open Sans local. And as you can see, it gives us a, a sort of like a view of what that's going to look like, our weight and so on. Now, you should just be able to go straight in and start using these fonts. But what I found is it doesn't always work perfectly. So what you may want to do is go into Elementor and into the Tools section. And from inside there, where we've got Regenerate CSS and Data, or Data, depending upon where you're from, we'll hit Regenerate Files and Data. And that then will regenerate all the files and should hopefully mean that you've got access to that font. So now let's go ahead and create a new page. We'll edit this with Elementor. Now once we select that and go to our Style tab, We'll open up our typography, open up our options, and we'll scroll to the top, and you'll see we've got a new section called Custom Fonts. As you can see, Open Sans is inside there, so we can select that, and now we can choose between our bold and our normal versions. There we go, that's how we'd add those fonts. And you can repeat this process as many times as you want, just making sure that you only upload the ones that you need, That'll give you then full access to those particular ones. So that's how we could do it with a tool like Elementor. Now, each of the page builders is probably going to have a very similar option and just recommend you take a look at the documentation on how to use it. Okay, so let's just say that you're not using a theme that supports it, you're not using a page builder that supports it, but what options do we have left to us? Well, this is where we can use a plugin. So we've got an option called Optimize My Google Fonts. Now there are plenty of different options you can use to do the same kind of thing. This is just one that I've seen to start off with. So let's take a quick look at how we go about installing and setting this up. So we're gonna go back to our Elementor site and let's just go search for that plugin and add that new plugin in. So let's add new and we search for OMGF. Oh, okay, there we go. So we've got the plugin, we're gonna install that We'll go ahead and activate it. And we've done that, we can go ahead then into the settings section, open up optimize Google fonts. And now we can go ahead and optimize fonts. So there you go, once we've opened that up, you can see we've got a range of different settings. And in all honesty, you can pretty much leave everything as it is. So you may be wondering, what does this plugin do? And do I need to set anything? Well, the reality is you can kind of basically leave all those settings as they are. And then what it's gonna do is when it's first run on the site, it's literally gonna go and find all the fonts that are being used and then replace all of the links to the Google-based hosted versions of those with local links download those ones to your actual server, therefore removing the reliance upon Google, therefore removing that information being sent to the Google servers after that initial setup. So this should then hopefully put you in a position where you don't have to worry about this. And if you are in Germany or you have German sort of visitors, you don't have to worry then about that IP information being sent over, therefore reducing your GDPR compliance issues and also potentially speeding up your website. Now, none of this is legal advice. If you have any questions, I would recommend you seek out legal advice. This is just a technical way in which you can deal with that problem and mitigate any future problems you may have with this kind of thing if 
this German ruling starts to spread further afield. As always, all of the applicable links are in the description below. And if you've got any comments, questions, or feedback, drop those in the comment section. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.